The Song of Joan of Arc by Christine de Pazan. Slide by Darian de Messina. Women Behind the Legend. Christine de Poisson was born in 1364 Venice, Italy, and died in 1430. She was a poet, a women's rights activist, journalist, and a novelist. Joan was born in 1412 and died in 1431. She was burned at the stake for being a witch. She was one of history's greatest saints and led victorious attacks over England. The objectives of this slide is to learn about Christine de Poisson and who she is, the real Joan of Arc, Joan of Arc as Christine wrote it, and society's view of Joan and how Christine used her women's rights spirit to idolize her. Christine de Poisson was a French poet and author born in 1364 Venice, Italy. Upon being widowed, she took up writing to support herself. Her first poems were ballads of love lost in her grieving in memory of her late husband. These verses met with success and this encouraged her to continue writing ballads. In her prose work, she wrote of women's heroism. After the Battle of Angricourt in France, she decided to retire to a convent and after finishing the Song of Joan of Arc, died circa 1430. The Real Joan of Arc, the story that surpasses the ages. The Real Jeanne d'Arc was born from a tenant farmer in the village of Dorigny. Her mother brought her up as a devout Catholic. In her early life around the age of 13, Joan started hearing voices, which she claimed were the voices of St. Catherine, St. Margaret, Margaret, and St. Michael. She said these voices commanded her to aid Charles in his fight against England and Burgundy, and to see him crowned as the King of France at Rheims. Rheims was the traditional location where French kings were crowned, but because Rheims was in the English grasp, Charles had not been able to hold a coronation ceremony. The Importance of the Song of Joan Christine wrote Joan of Arc in her final years of life. It was completed in 1429 while she was tucked away in a convent. Joan of Arc was a piece of literature that praised the most iconic female saint in her life and death. Christine wrote this during the height of Joan of Arc's success and reflects the national sentiment towards this war's leader at that time. In addition to being an exhilarating piece of work, it also shows an impressive outlook on Joan's military success and impact by one of in the impact by one of Joan's followers. Joan has stated that I would rather die than do a thing which I know to be a sin or against the will of God. The Heroism of Joan In 1428, Joan set out for the land of those loyal to Charles. Joan traveled to see him and as the voices told her to do in order to follow her destiny. Once she reached her destination, she asked for a hearing with the future king. Initially, she was rejected by the local magistrate, but she persisted, attracting a small band of followers who believed her claims to be the virgin who is destined to save France, according to a popular prophecy. Joan promises Charles she will see him crowned king at Reims and asks him to give her an army to lead to Orleans. After convincing Charles that she will see him to the crown, Charles grants her his men and allows her to lead them to Orleans on March of 1429. Against the advice of most of his counselors and generals, he grants this request, and Joan sets off dressed in white armor and riding a white horse. Joan followed sudden commands from the voices in her head and stumbled upon a battle between English and French forces. Rallying the French troops and giving them hope, she drove the English out of, fo out of fort after fort expertly ending the siege and earning herself popularity throughout France as the miraculous Maid of Orleans. After her victory, she personally escorts Charles across enemy territory into Reims. Her followers and Joan herself overtook towns that defied the rightful king, and due to her ferocity and skill, she was able to crown King Charles on July of 1429. King Charles then crowned Joan and her family to French nobility in thanks for Joan's services to France. The Fall of Joan Joan continued to fight for Charles' interests, but her luck has run short. In May of 1430, while holding off Burgundian troops at the Battle of Compiègne, Joan was captured by John of Luxembourg, the Maid of Orleans being so popular and such a valuable symbol of the pro-Charles side of the English and Burgundians 
knew killing her would create a martyr and widespread panic. Instead, they kept Joan locked away and made arrangements to have the church discredit her. After two escape attempts, including a leap from a 60-foot tower, Joan comes to trial under Bishop Pierre Cochin for suspected heresy and witchcraft. Cochin finds a way to prove her guilty of heresy. Before being handed over to secular authorities, Joan signs an arbitration admitting that her previous statements had been lies. But after a few days, she says she hasn't meant the abjur abjuration, and she was sentenced to burn at the stake. Joan of Arc, the Virgin Saint, burns on May 30th in 1431. She is 19 years old. France viewed the Maid of Orleans as one of the most influential saints in our history, who embodied the spirit of France and its unity. Christine uses this to her advantage and depicted Joan as the strong, independent woman who faced danger in the name of God to give courage to her fellow women and to show them that standing up for what you believe in can be worth any punishment. The feminist and anti-suffrage quotes from the Song of Joan of Arc that show true courage and the strength of women. I am not afraid. I was born to do this. Joan of Arc. One life is all we have and we live it as we believe in living it. But to sacrifice what you are and to live without belief is a fate more terrible than dying. Joan of Arc. I was admonished to adopt feminine clothes. I refuse and still refuse. As for other avocations of women, there are plenty of other women to perform them. Joan of Arc. There were also many movies and TV shows based on this iconic piece of literature. Many have been created from 1928 and continued all the way up to 1999. Similar quotes were brought on of Joan of Arc throughout the ages as well. Rhonda Rousey has been quoted saying, Joan of Arc is my hero. Yeah, she got matered like a lot of other saints did, but she took some people out on the way. If Joan of Arc could turn the tide of an entire war before her 18th birthday, you can get out of bed by E. Jean Carroll. Chastity does not mean abstention from sexual wrong. It means something flaming, like Joan of Arc. Gilbert K. Chesterton. I like Joan of Arc, best of all my books, and it is the best. I know it perfectly well. Mark Twain. My final thoughts and opinions are that Christine de Pazine was a woman's right activist who believed in the strength of women and all they can achieve, and she used a current female icon to bring hopes to those who would read her words. Regardless of the Maid of Orleans being a vessel for God, or just a girl who hears voices, it did not differ from the fact that she got men to follow her into battle and due to her heroism, crowned King Charles and gave him his rightful place in his land. Pazine used this saint to try and give hope to those around her who were thought lesser or felt they could amount to nothing. <laughs>